Hi, my name is Kate Orson. I'm a writer and parent educator. I'm British, but I'm living in Italy. But what I'm going to talk about mainly refers to the UK because that's the system that I understand the most. Um, so in the beginning of this coronavirus pandemic, as soon as lockdown happened, I began to just have this feeling in my gut that something wasn't right. And I wasn't afraid of the virus. I kind of got some high strength vitamin C and had read about how it's um, not that dangerous for people that don't have um, other health conditions. So I wasn't too worried, but I just had this extreme sense of physical in my body, like my stomach felt like it was racing with anxiety all the time. I was like, I am not sure what's going on and I don't trust it. And I don't exactly know why. Um, as time went on, I began to realise what my body was trying to tell me. That's how I felt anyway. Um, I just remember reading these articles about, um, for example, there was an ice rink in Milton Keynes and they were like, this ice rink is going to be used to turn into a morgue for the deaths that we're going to have. There were other ones about private hospitals. There were other ones about how much that private hospitals that were going to be turned into coronavirus hospitals and other articles about how much PPE they were going to use. And it felt like there was so much um, building up into something that hadn't actually happened, but was going to happen. And that was the case with the um, mathematical model that said that 500,000 deaths were going to happen. And then that figure was um, adjusted to 5,000, but it was almost like nobody even registered that it was, it had gone down. It already, it had been bigged up in people's minds and they thought that it was going to be huge. Um, and I just started to get warning bells ringing in my head when I um, found out about the Coronavirus Act and how people couldn't have visitors in the hospital and how um, doctors weren't allowed to talk on social media and they said it was because they didn't want doctors to speak out about how they didn't have enough PPE but I just felt there's more to it than that I thought there's a there's a much bigger reason it just seemed to tie in with all this other stuff like you can't do an autopsy on a on a body of someone with coronavirus it just seemed that that they were trying to hide something and then um, I began in seeing all these social media posts, people saying that their loved one had had cancer, heart disease, um, even a car crash, and they had gone down on the death certificate as COVID-19. And I remember telling this to my sister, and she's not on social media at all, and she was like, oh, you know, don't believe everything you read on social media and I, I don't think she really understands how it works that you can look at people's profiles you can kind of ascertain in your head like does this look like a real person or not and they these didn't seem like made up stories and then a friend of mine told me that the same thing had happened to a friend of hers that COVID-19 had gone down on the death certificate of her loved one and it wasn't COVID-19 and this was back in April so when Matt Hancock launched his inquiry in mid-July to say that they had exaggerated the deaths, I, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're that stupid. You're the Minister of Health. Either you are that stupid and you didn't know that this has been happening for months and months and months, or you knew and there's some reason why you have withheld that information from April to July. In April, thousands of people knew that on social media. The kind of people that are dismissed as conspiracy theorists, you know, fake news, spreading disinformation. And people like that are just spreading information because it's not being covered in the mainstream media. Um, the other thing that had warning bells going off in my head was when vulnerable people were told to stay inside and... I, along with lots and lots of other people, immediately thought, hmm, vitamin D is really good for the immune system. Why are we not saying stay inside but get some sunlight on your doorstep even? I just thought there was something very, very odd about that. 
And then the same thing, months and months and months later, when all those vulnerable people had spent three months at home, information starts being published in the media that vitamin D might be important in recovery from COVID. I'm just really questioning why all this information is coming up months later. And the other thing was I just felt, I can remember one time um, a friend of mine phoned me. She was like on the verge of a panic attack. She was so upset about what was going on. And then I got off the phone from her and I had a message from another friend who was also had just had a panic attack. And and that's when I realised that this was a mass trauma that w- affected every single human being. Um, and yet there's so much scientific research into the effect of fear on the immune system, as well as the effect of isolation on the immune system. It's up there with smoking as being that um, much of a risk. And, and I just thought, how can you save people's lives by doing all the things that are bad for the immune system? It just made no sense to me. Again, either the government is completely stupid or, or even, even worse, they know, and this has some ulterior purpose. Um, and then there were things about care homes, um, whistleblower doctors speaking up about empty hospitals. And I know that these stories were taken to the media by people and journalists would not write them. They just would not report the news. And, and that to me is extremely worrying. I think that if it had been 20 years ago, um, that this would have come out in the news. And now it, it's like they're clamping down on this narrow perception of reality that we're all supposed to believe through the media and things just aren't getting reported. People are turning to social media to report for themselves and then they're being clamped down as being misinformation. Um, yeah. And so what is the ulterior motive? I, I, um, I'm seeing that in the UK, cash is suddenly dirty, there's a coin shortage. And I, and I just feel like if you want to introduce a cashless society to your nation, do it in an open way, discuss it, even have a referendum on it. Don't do it on the back of a virus. It's so deceptive. And yeah, this idea of they're going to have some kind of health passport system, which will also connect to your cash. And it's like, at, one, at what point will it be oh, you can't have your cash until you've got your vaccinations up to date, all your vaccinations. And yeah, like I've been on my Facebook comments, I've had all, you know, whining about freedom. And I think people think that people are complaining because they've been locked down and they've had freedom taken away. But it's really the freedom that may be lost in the future. That is the thing that's really concerning me. Um, Part of the reason I feel so passionate about it, this is because um, I suffered a medical injury from a gynecological procedure and I still deal with the side effects every day. And through raising awareness and being on social media and Twitter, I've met a lot of parents of children with vaccine injuries. And like my story was denied by doctors and I met thousands of other women like me I've seen how these parents they have this situation where their children have been injured they know they've been injured they're intuitive they're intelligent they know that one day their children were fine and the next day they weren't and they aren't allowed to talk about vaccine injury every single day there is a newspaper that publishes an article full of hate about the parents of vaccine injured children, which they call anti-vaxxers. This is not a term that any parent of an injured child would ever use. It's used to um, spread hate. It's used so that you don't think about what's really happened to those people. And it's used so that you, you don't listen to them. You don't look at their stories. As soon as they start to speak, you'll just spew out the hate. Not you, but a lot of people are just reading these articles And then spewing out hate that they've read in an article to fellow human beings that have children that have been injured. I, there's a lot about the situation I don't fully understand, a lot I'm not sure about. But the one thing I'm 100% sure about is that vaccine injury is a huge problem that is 
so under acknowledged by medical professions. They're just trying to sweep it under the carpet. And then every time someone speaks up about it, they're like, oh, shut up, you anti-vaxxer. Spreading hate. Um, yeah, and Matt Hancock, he's got shares in the vaccine industry. Yeah, you, I mean, go and look at the information about the hydrochloroquine. I can't say it. But the drug, Trump's taken it, so suddenly now it's a political thing. Oh, you know, if you're left wing, you've got to wait for the vaccine. If you're right wing, you believe in a drug because Trump took it. Why are we being political? Why are we not just treating people in the best possible way? It's, it's completely disgusting. And all I can say is the media isn't going to give you all the information you need to know what's going on in the world. So please look at the evidence. Look at things for yourself. Find the facts. You know, you might read something about a wacky conspiracy in the newspapers, but what are they trying to distort there? What facts have they taken and are trying to ridicule or trying to dismiss to lead you off the trail? You have to think for yourself and do research for yourself. And I'm really glad that lots of people are doing that because we really need them, everybody, to start thinking. Thank you for watching.